Hey everybody, I'm Will, a PhD student at Lancaster University, and I'll be running through the Net DevOps session this afternoon. This session highlights NGCDI's goal to further network DevOps. For those unfamiliar with DevOps as a whole, in short, it's a form of workflow process that adds emphasis on tight collaboration between the developer of a service and the operations team who control the service's production life. Although DevOps itself is seeing a lot of popularity right now, especially within the cloud software domain, DevOps within the networking context has only recently started to emerge. This presentation will specifically look at our vision for Net DevOps and our implementation of a testing phase that we dub NEAT, Network Emulation-Based Automated Testing. I'll start off with a short presentation covering our proposed Net DevOps approach. I'll show a demo, highlighting a little bit of what NEAT can do, and I'll go through a couple of potential use cases at the end. On this slide, you can see an overview of what we see as an optimal network DevOps workflow. I know there's a lot here, so I'll break it down a little. If you're familiar with CI-CD systems already, you might notice that some of the components on this diagram are the same as for software CI-CD, and that is by design. Although it is worth noting that CI-CD is often considered synonymous with DevOps. However, not all CI-CD approaches actually provide real benefits to DevOps workflows. To ensure this pipeline incorporates DevOps in a way appropriate to the networking context, we consider both developers and operators independent contributors right from the start. With the developers providing the code for the virtual network functions, our configuration to traditional network devices, and the operators providing test suites that can ensure that changes are tested in a way that can resemble the real deployment scenario. Once the changes are made to the content in the repository, the CI-CD pipeline can commence. Traditional jobs can be carried out, such as building, style checking, and unit testing. However, to better accommodate the high standards expected in network function testing, we add another job, a set of tests executed in an emulated environment. I'll cover this further in the next slide. The second half of this pipeline looks at deploying the changes should they pass the tests. Here, a staggered rollout into production takes place. And in this process, micro benchmarking will take place in the network to look for performance metrics that could not be gathered when testing in an emulated environment. This component of the network DevOps architecture will be discussed more in the next NGCDI event. So back to the emulated testing phase. Network emulation is not a new way of testing network functions. In fact, it's already quite a popular approach. However, our platform NEAT provides the means to automate this method. This step looks for critical errors, such as unexpected loss of connectivity between two points in a network. Thus, emulation that does not provide simulation does still suffice, enabling tests to be executed within reasonable time constraints, an important factor to those consuming paid CI-CD minutes. As for DevOps, with an emulation-based test, network operators are well suited to provide realistic testing topologies allowing for infrastructure-specific issues to be caught even before the code is deployed. So, how would somebody actually go about using the NEAT implementation we're developing? Right now, there are two main interaction methods. A Compose-style YAML file that defines tests and testbeds that can be executed locally via the command line, and an API that allows for external services, such as CI-CD platforms, to create testbeds and execute tests upon them although the API at this stage is still very much in development. A testbed consists of some name to identify it, a list of file assets needed for the virtual network, the name of the supported emulator, and the configuration for said emulator. To be able to show NEAT working, we've adapted the popular network emulator, MiniNet, to work with NEAT. Tests are where it gets a little bit more interesting. Each test needs some unique name and a sequence of testing blocks. Each block is simply a network test. For example, the ping block will execute an ICMP ping between two given nodes in a set of virtual networks. Each block needs an expression that can be used to evaluate whether it has passed or failed. If it passes, a point score is given to the overall test. And if the point score at the end exceeds a supply threshold, the test is then considered successful. The actual tests themselves can be designed to fulfill purposes important to each contributing party. For example, Developers may wish to ensure that a configuration change interplays with other interdependent configurations, 
and operators might just wish to ensure that the change won't invalidate any intents relating to that service or other services in that function chain. So, to show you a little bit of what a NEAT system can do at this stage, I'm going to run through an example where I show you how NEAT can automatically detect errors in network function configurations. Specifically, in this example, I'll be testing how a click modular router configuration can be tested on a ClickOS unikernel. For those unaware of Click and or ClickOS, Click is a platform for building virtual network functions, often used in research and education, and ClickOS is the same as Click, however in the form of a super minimal virtual machine known as a unikernel. All the code for this can be found at the repository, linked in the bottom left hand corner of the slide. To best highlight what NEAT can do, I'll be showing this demonstration entirely from the web browser using GitHub code spaces and GitHub actions so I can both edit the network configurations and test them in emulated topologies all from my browser window. What you can see here is a configuration file for a click modular router. Specifically, this configuration is a Ethernet switch that supports up to three ports. As I mentioned before, Developers may also wish to use traditional jobs found in CICD, such as building the code. As ClickOS builds a virtual network function, everything is in software. So therefore, we've provided this Docker file to actually build the ClickOS unikernel images. And more specifically to this project, this is the neat compose file. This defines what test beds we will need for the testing phases and each test which will be executed within those test beds. The first of these assets is the libvirt XML file. This defines how we want to instantiate the unikernel virtual machines using the libvirt API. Secondly, we have a simple bash script which actually instantiates the ClickOS configuration onto the created unikernels. And finally, we have the topology file. This defines the overview of the virtual network we want to create using our extended Mininet Python API. So, as for actual continuous integration, this is going to be using GitHub Actions. I'll be defining two jobs. The first of these jobs is just a build phase, which uses a Docker file we looked at earlier to actually create the virtual machine images to create these unikernels. The second of these jobs is our testing step. In this testing step, we'll be using neat to actually check if the configuration acts as a valid Ethernet switch. Okay, so for actual demoing, what I'm going to do, I'm going to break the Ethernet switch configuration I showed you earlier by making it so that all the traffic outputs through the exact same port, not the behavior we're wanting. So I'm going to make these changes, I'm going to make a commit, and I'm going to push that to the repository. Then the GitHub Actions pipeline should begin. Okay, so now that's completed, we can see that this test failed. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna fix that mistake I made earlier, and I'm gonna run it through the GitHub Actions pipeline again, and hopefully this time it should work.
Now that the neat system's been run through again, this time with functional code, we can see that we're getting a positive response from neat, saying that this ethernet switch is behaving exactly as expected. So now the CI-CD system could continue and it could see a staggered roll onto production. That's it for the demo. I'm going to head back to the slides for a bit of a summary. So one of the benefits of this system is it's robust and repeatable. As the tests are defined in this YAML-based configuration, these tests can be easily repeated by any dev who has access to this repository, and it saves on a lot of manual testing time. And another benefit of this system is its full stack DevOps. All parties involved can contribute to the CI-CD pipeline, developers, configurators, and operators. And all parties can make sure the tests are aligned to provide feedback which are useful to them. That's all we've got time for in this presentation. If you want to know more about NEAT or Lancaster's vision for network DevOps, keep your eyes open for more NGCDI events. Thanks for watching.